look at the size of this burrow. I wonder if there's anything in there. <laughs> this is when something jumps out and gets me. God, it goes down for miles. Is that a badger or something? Look at that. There's another one just up there as well. I'm a little bit worried that Digby's gonna go down one of those holes because he's literally been bred to go down burrows and get animals. <laughs> That's like what he's been bred to do over hundreds of years. I don't think he'd go down one that big, hopefully. Wouldn't want to meet a badger at the other end. Come on. What are you doing? You sniffing out badgers? You sniffing out the badgers? Oh, you're so wet. Come on in. So we have some exciting news that we've been looking forward to sharing with you all. And this might come as a bit of a surprise to some of you, but it's been something that has been on the cards now for a couple of months really, I suppose. But we've just recently confirmed everything and booked in the dates and yeah, everything's kind of moving forward now. So I thought we'd share it with you. But basically we're moving the house back to the campsite that we were staying on before we moved it to where we are at the moment. There's a couple of reasons really. I think one of the main ones is we just really miss the community of being on the campsite because where we are at the moment we're just in a garden and we're surrounded by people that just live in conventional houses there's nobody who really shares our interest in living the way that we do and we really feel kind of out of place where we are at the moment and that's something that we really miss from staying on the campsite there's a couple of other reasons as well so becky and i we both grew up in this area so we feel like coming back here not that it's taking a step back, but we feel like we kind of want to have our own life in our own place, if that makes sense. So coming back here just doesn't really feel right. We both want to have that feeling of our own kind of destiny, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm overcomplicating this, but basically we're going back to the old campsite. We've set a date for next Sunday, which is the 27th of March. So I think it's about 11 days time. I've got a couple of things I need to do back at the house before we move but I'll go over that once I'm back home again. The weather forecast for today though is pretty bad. I think this afternoon we've got heavy rain pretty much all afternoon and I think the rain's going to start well anytime now really so I don't actually know how much I'm going to get done today but we're just out for a morning stroll. Digby as usual when Becky's not here is dawdling a bit and isn't that enthusiastic about his walk like he normally is but that's okay we're just having a, a nice stroll through the fields and then we're gonna head back have a bit of brekkie and then start sorting a few things out so one of the jobs i wanted to get done today particularly before it rains is i wanted to have a good sort out through our garden box because Ever since I started building the van, I've accumulated quite a few more tools. And we also got the jet washer as well, which we didn't have before. So I need to be able to get everything that we use inside of this garden box. And at the moment I can't do that because there's too much stuff. So I'm gonna have a bit of a sort out through this, get rid of a few things, tidy it up a bit. And yeah, just kind of make it a bit more manageable really. It's funny how you forget how many things you have until you start going through cupboards. <laughs> So that didn't actually take too long. <laughs> took about three minutes. Most of the stuff in there we do need to keep. This is kind of for the van still. This chair is really annoying. It's one of those like fold up sun lounger chairs. Becky got it about three years ago. And I think she's used it like four times and it's like the absolute bane of my life, that thing. But she won't let me get rid of it. So that's got to stay. We've got a bucket full of sawdust that we use for the toilet. So that's obviously got to stay couple of footballs for Joss. We've got a head trimmer that my mum got me for Christmas I think a couple of years ago um, but we don't have hedges anymore so I'm not really too sure what to do with that. We might sell it and yeah that's it really just a couple of bits and pieces in there. The jet washer needs to go in there and then all of my tools as well which I think will be fine. I'll be able to fit them in in there somewhere so yeah. So the next job on the list is I need to cut this stump down. So I've actually already started this job. I just need to finish it off. I've already cut two big chunks off of it. But this used to be around about eight foot tall, I suppose. And when the house came in, 
apparently because it's leaning slightly in apparently it was really difficult to reverse the house back although i think it will be okay as it is because i've taken the top off i want to get it down to ground level just so i know that when we tow the house out it's not going to catch on that and damage anything because that back corner might be a bit tight as it kind of comes out and sort of down around that way so i need to cut this down i did think about perhaps hiring a chainsaw to cut it down but i think it's going to cost around about 100 pounds to do that and i just couldn't justify spending that much money on it because if i had to go out and earn 100 pounds to pay for the hire of the chainsaw that's like a day's work whereas cutting that down with a handsaw would take me about an hour so yeah doesn't really make sense to to hire a chainsaw just means it's going to take a bit longer but that's fine That literally took me about three hours to do that and I'm absolutely knackered. I'm like shaking. I feel like I'm shaking because I've been soaring for so long. I wonder how many calories I've burnt. Probably thousands, I should think. But there we have it, guys. The tree stump is officially removed. Well, apart from that bottom bit, but I'm not cutting through that. <laughs> Don't even suggest it. God, the difference a day makes. <laughs> Shortly after I finished cutting the tree stump down yesterday, it really started raining. I mean, I was cutting the tree stump down during the rain, but it was only kind of light rain. But shortly after that, it just absolutely tipped it down. So it's safe to say that yesterday afternoon, well, the remainder of yesterday afternoon was a bit of a write off. I've got all my waterproofs on because the last thing that I wanted to get done today before Becky comes back in the van, I wanted to clean the car. It's absolutely filthy inside and out. <laughs> when you have a dog that gets really muddy and you've got an 11 year old that goes out and plays football and gets muddy boots, then the car inevitably gets very dirty, especially in the winter as well. I don't really clean the car very often, as you can probably tell, <laughs> but it is absolutely filthy. The inside is just as bad as well. I can't open it because it's locked, but trust me when I say the car is really dirty. Well, it's far from perfect, but it's better than it was. <laughs> uh, 
I feel like you really have to be in the mood to clean your car. I'm never really in the mood to clean the car. The outside isn't too bad. Now we've got the jet washer. It's actually quite easy to do and I don't mind doing it. But the inside just takes so long. And there's so many nooks and crannies in the car that you just can't get to unless you have like a paintbrush or something and you kind of get all the little bits. But it's just never gonna happen, is it? But I think at the end of the day, it is just a car that's designed to get you from A to B and it's always gonna get dirty, especially if you've got a long-haired dog with her belly really low to the ground <laughs> and you've got muddy football boots in here and yeah, it's, it's just always gonna get dirty, isn't it? So with that said, there's not much point in making it really clean because it's just gonna get dirty again anyway. But apart from that, I think we're pretty much good to go with the house next Sunday. Last time we brought the house here, we hired a van and we put all the big stuff in the van. Well, we put quite a lot of stuff in the van, to be honest with you. But I think we'll be able to get the fridge in our new van which was the main problem because it was too tall to go in the other one and i think most of the other stuff we're just going to leave in the house because it's not a matter of the house being too heavy it's a case of things getting broken so as long as everything's secure then we're going to leave pretty much everything in the house as it is and just tow it there just kind of like that really minimizes the stress of moving and everything as well. I still need to take the fence out so we can get the house out, but I think I'll do that next week or nearer the time. But for this week anyway, I think that's probably gonna do it. Becky will be back in around about four hours, so I need to have dinner ready by then. I still got some cleaning to do in the house as well. That comes around really quick, doesn't it? Housework. <laughs> but until the next one, guys, have a safe drive, stay alive. Have a lovely day, try not to spill anything and we'll see you guys next time.